All right, friends, we are back. Amen? Amen. All today, I couldn't wait for 7 p.m. to come and share with God's people what God has been sharing with us. You know, even though we're living in perilous times, it's really a joy to be alive today because I believe that we have the opportunity to do what John the Baptist would have loved to do if he were alive today. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? To do what the apostles, John and Paul and Peter and James, would love to do if they were alive today. So we have a solemn charge, yes. and we must be found faithful. Mm -hmm. So now this is, uh, what, night three, Hillary? Yes. Night three of this series entitled uh, Countdown. To the what, Hillary? To the death of Protestantism. Amen. And what is our solemn vow by God's grace? Here I stand. Amen. And this evening, we are looking at what is going to happen on tomorrow, the death of Protestantism, which takes place October 31st, 2017. And let me just put out a clear disclaimer. That's what they think. Amen. The papacy and apostate Protestants that they are going to put an end to the Protestant Reformation. Now, as we have been looking at the various news articles, mm -hmm. the videos, the various convocations happening regarding October 31st, 2017, what are some of those key choice words that these uh, apostate Protestants and Roman Catholics are using in the context of putting an end to the Protestant Reformation. Well, we've been hearing much talk about healing of wounds. And here we have on the screen, just to confirm that, this is from Kairos 2017, and we have been covering this since last week, right. amen? Mm -hmm. And if you notice here on this article, men from Babylon, specifically the evangelicals, the charismatic movement, in the very last sentence, they're talking about the healing of wounds right. between the Roman Catholics and the Protestant churches. Mm -hmm. And here we have it again. This is with Mr. President Donald J. Trump. Amen? Yes. And his advisors around him. And as you're trying to form a compact, a union with the papacy, what words are they throwing around? The words to heal the wound. Mm -hmm. If you look at the blue words, that's first line, the blue words, in efforts. Hillary? In efforts to mend the wounds of the evangelical Catholic relationship, mm. Moore has requested a meeting with the Pope. So here we have it. And who is, who is Moore, by the way? Moore is one of Trump's so-called spiritual advisors. Right. And we move on. The Daily Beast, just what now? T uh, 30, 29 days ago, October 1st, 2017. Yes. What are they talking about again? Red words, Hillary, for many Christians. This commemoration. This commemoration marks a dramatic shift mm. as never in history have old wounds mm. between traditions felt closer to healing. So we see them talking about the healing of this wound, the healing of this wound. And I want everyone to notice on the back wall here behind us, please note this phrase, killing to heal. Kill in order to heal. Wow. And as you're talking about the healing of wounds, in the context now of putting a death nail in the coffin to Protestantism, right. whose wound is going to be healed? It's going to be the deadly wound of the papacy that was inflicted in 1798. Now, is that in scripture? It is. Let's take a look at that. Revelation chapter 13. Let's take a look at verse number three. Let's open up our Bibles. And friends, this topic... It's a very solemn one, please. I'm going to encourage you to take notes, all right? Because God is going to share with us some beautiful principles from his word to, to how to get victory. Amen. Verse number three, Hillary, verse three, chapter 13, verse three. And I saw one of his wounds as it were wounded to death. One of his heads. heads. I'm sorry. As it was what now? As it was wounded to death. And what? And his deadly wound was healed. You know, and as we have been looking at this, Yesterday, we shared with you a statement about the Alpha and the Omega of apostasy. Amen? Remember that? The Amen. Alpha and Omega of apostasy. And I want you all to catch this point. Because in the Alpha, during the beginning of God's movement, the mm -hmm. Protestant Reformation, what we must understand 
is that the rise of the Protestant Reformation eventually led to the downfall of the papacy hmm. in 1798 when she received her deadly wound. Wow. So what we're seeing here is, as in the Alpha, the mm -hmm. beginning of the Protestant Reformation, which led to the wound of the papacy in 1798, in the Omega, what would take place now, Hillary? Well, as we have um, on the board, Protestantism will be executed, so they think, again, in order for the deadly wound to be healed. Look at what the statement says in the book, Great Controversy, page 127. Let's begin with the blue words. It says this, but the very means adopted for Rome's aggrandizement provoked the deadliest blow to her power and greatness. Hmm. It was this that aroused the most determined and successful of what, Hillary? Of the enemies of popery. And led to the battle which shook the papal throne mm. and jostled the triple crown upon whose head? The pontiff's head. And it's interesting that the popes in that time period, what type of a crown did they wear? A triple crown. A triple crown. I wonder what wow. that triple crown points to, especially in these last days, based on Revelation 16. Mm -hmm. Well, the past three nights, we've been uh, delving deeply into the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet Amen. and their unlawful union in Amen. order to uh, persecute God's people. Notice what this says here. This is Great Controversy, page 190. It says, Martin Luther speaking, I will discuss and write, but I will constrain none. Why? For faith is a voluntary act. Then he says, see what I have done? What did he do? I stood up against the Pope, indulgences and papists, but without violence mm. or tumult. I put forward God's word. I preached and wrote. This was all I did. Mm. And yet, while I was asleep, the word that I had preached overthrew popery. Praise God. So that neither prince nor emperor has done it so much harm. And yet I did nothing. The word alone Praise did God. all. Amen. Would you say amen, my friends? Amen. So this was the Protestant Reformation that led to the wound of the papacy Correct. in 1798. Mm -hmm. But now in the Omega, in the final steps of this earth's history, we're seeing now they're making attempts to put an end to Protestantism right. to now heal whose wound? The papacy's wound. Not on the papacy. Go ahead. And also the image of the beast. But I wanted to say that the two cannot coexist. Mm. So long as Protestantism thrives and is alive, popery will be wounded. That's true. But in order for popery to thrive, yes. Protestantism must be killed. And so when we hear wow. people talking about coexist, mm, mm, something mm. has to give. Something mm, has mm, to mm. be That's wounded. True. Something has to That's die true. in order for there to be a thriving of these opposing powers. Amen. And if you also understand the term, the, the term killing to heal, mm -hmm. the death of Protestantism to heal the wound of the papacy. But notice now, after October 31st, 2017, when they put an end to the protest in their minds, something else will receive life. Does anyone know what will receive life once Protestantism is dead in their minds? What will receive life? Besides the healing of the papacy's wound, what will receive life? The image Amen. of the beast. Wonderful. Let's take a look at that. Chapter 13 of Revelation. This is what, my friends? The image of the beast. Let's read verse number 15, Hillary. Verse 15, what it says there. And he had power to give life mm. unto the image of the beast, yes. that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be, what? Should be killed. So something dies, but something else is given life. Amen. And uh, notice now, once the image receives life, mm -hmm. it's one and the same to say the, the, the wound of the papacy is now healed. Right. Because it is the image of the beast that causes the whole world to worship whom? To worship beast. the first beast. That's mm -hmm. verse 12, right? Yes. Read verse 12 for us, Hillary. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes, 
causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. Who's what? Whose deadly wound was, was healed. healed. You what? know, friends, again, we're living in some solemn times. Yes. So now, will the papers' wound be healed? Yes. And this is what October 31st, 2017 is all about. Correct. And notice now, once this wound is healed of the papacy and life is given to the image of the beast, what happens next? Well, all the world will wander after the beast. Mm, they mm, will mm. worship the beast, mm, and mm. the beast will then wage war against mm. God's true Protestant people that are or, carrying forward the protests. Only the beast will wage war against God's people? The beast and its image. Let's read that. Verse number 3, mm -hmm. again, of chapter 13 of Revelation. What it says there, Hillary? Chapter 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, Amen. and his deadly wound was healed. Amen. And all the world wandered after the beast. That's one. They wander. Mm. And they worshiped the dragon. That's two, which mm. gave power unto the beast. Yes. And they worshiped the beast. Who is saying, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war, war with, with him? him? All right. And notice now in verse 15, which we read earlier, they will what now? Say, yeah. if you do not bow and worship the image of the beast, you should be what? You should be killed. So it's war coming for God's people. Yes, it and is. that's why, friends, these are our solemn times in which we're living in. A time of trouble such as never, never was. was. It's coming. You know, I recall the statement in Great Controversy, page 622, where we're told that not just a season of distress, but the time of trouble such as never was mm. is soon to open before us. And we shall need um, a faith which can endure weariness, mm -hmm. delay, hunger, a faith that will not faint, though it is severely tried. Oh, friends, that Amen. time is right upon us. But now notice, I want everyone to catch this point. We're going to make a slight detour. We have been emphasizing on the death of Protestantism mm -hmm. and the end of the protest from the perspective of the papacy and apostate Protestants. Right. And while we should focus on that, coming tomorrow, right? right. October 31st, Correct. right? Correct. Don't you forget the Bible tells us that before the papacy's wound is healed, before the National Sunday Law is enforced, before the image of the beast begins to persecute God's people, there must come something first. What must happen first before the papacy's wound is healed and the beast is revealed and all the world begins to wander and worship the first beast? What must happen first? Well, if we look at history and how the beast rose to prominence in the first place, yes. uh, we see that it was a falling away that preceded the man of sin being revealed. Did you all get that, friends? Let's read that. But the falling away, we're. It was First, we are among God's people in the church. In the church. Go there with me. Second Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians, chapter two. So, friends, while we see October thirty first, twenty seventeen, is only a few hours away now. Right. Less than twenty four hours now, friends. The Bible says before the man of sin is revealed. And what does it mean being revealed? Not just people knowing that's the Antichrist, right. but also him being exalted. Right. Regaining supremacy. That's it, because he was once wounded in 1798. Right. Now he's going to be what? Exalted. exalted. All right? Before that takes place, what must happen first? A falling away. Let's read that. Place. Verse number three. Let Second no man, Thessalonians 2. All right, Henry, go ahead. Let no man deceive you by any means, yes. for that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, wow. who opposeth and exalteth himself mm. above all that is called God or, or that, that is, is worshipped, worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So what must happen first? A falling away first. So now let's go into the Alpha. And we're using those two terms, Alpha mm -hmm. and Omega, to address the movements outside the church and also inside the church. All right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to the beginning then. In which church was there a falling away? And then that led to the rise of the papacy. In which church? The Christian church. Look at this right. on, on the screen. I'll get back to that. Great Controversy, page 443. Hillary, what it says there? 
It was apostasy that led the early church to seek the aid of the civil government. Yes. And this prepared the way for the development of the papacy, the beast. Pause right there. So apostasy in which church? In the Christian church. All right. The, the early, early church, church. The Christian church. The apostolic Which led church. to what now, Hillary? Uh, the image, the development of the papacy. The beast. beast. All right. Correct. That was in 538 A.D. Right. Amen? Amen. When she rose, right? Mm -hmm. And then the papacy to the beast received a deadly wound in what year? In 1798. 1798. So for her to re-emerge, what must happen again in the omega as in the alpha? There must come a falling, falling away, away first. We are now. In the church. And that's really sad. So that means we have to be aware of what's taking place in the church. And just as readily as we expose the papacy and expose yes. the sins of the image of yes, the beast, yes. we have to look at the falling away. We have to be able to identify the apostasy because that is what opens the way for the beast to be exalted. Yes. So while we say we're Protestants, when we allow apostasy to go on in the church, we're actually helping the beast power to rise back to world dominance. And notice now, once the beast power of the papacy received power in 538, right? Mm -hmm. Did she not command that all dissenters to her doctrines and false worship should be killed? Oh, yes. I want to ask you a question. So what will happen in the Omega? It has will, to be the same. Will they also put people to death? Yes. I want to ask you a question. Do Americans, people, and civil leaders believe in the death penalty? Yes. What about the papacy? Oh, yes. Does the papacy have on her records yes. that those who do not go along with the common good, those who are viewed as barbaric, should be killed? All right. Yes, it's look on at, record. Look at this. It's right there. Mm -hmm. The death penalty. Right there on the screen. Right. Won't spend much time there. And we they, have covered that before. Yes, yes, and they say that the executions that did take place during her reign were legally justified. See? That's it. Let's get back. So now let's go back to Great Controversy, page 443. So the apostasy in the early church, the Christian church, led right. to what now? The beast. Right. That was 538 through 1798. For her to rise again through the image, what must happen first? A falling away. Let's read that now. Said Paul. Said Paul, there shall come a falling away and that man of sin be revealed. So apostasy in the church will prepare the way for the image to the beast. Read that. The Bible declares that before the coming of the Lord, mm -hmm. there will exist a state of religious declension similar to that in, in the, the first in the centuries. Alpha. So friends, so in which church will apostasy be found before the image of the beast is formed? In which church? The seventh day Adventist Do you know why it has to be this church? A falling away first? If you're falling away, that means you were once in truth. Right. All right? Amen? Mm -hmm. And since 1844, when the second angel's message pronounced and proclaimed, Babylon is... Fallen. Is... Fallen. What two groups were in a falling condition in 1844? Roman Catholicism and, and apostate Protestants. So that means who must fall away now? Who must be found in apostasy right. just before the image of the beast? The Seventh-day Adventist, Adventist Church, my friends. And it's not accidental why the word falling is pinned there. Now, notice, notice, because some may argue mm -hmm. this point, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what does God say about the Laodicean church? Well, did she what wretched, condition is she in? Wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. Does that sound like she's in apostasy? Yes. yes. And notice now, what does God threaten, as it were, let lukewarm Laodiceans with? What does he say he would do if they refuse to repent? And let spew them out. Yes. That means a close approbation upon them. Right. All right. And notice now, let's get back. Look at your screen. This is great controversy. And what two scriptures at the bottom, the second paragraph, what two scriptures does Sister White mention when she says, so apostasy in the church will prepare the way for the image to the beast. What two texts did she quote? 2 Tim Timothy 3, 1 through 5, and 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. And what does that scripture say in 2 Timothy 3, especially verse 5? Well, it says, know this, that in the last, last days perilous yeah. times shall come. And verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, of godliness but denying the, the power, power thereof from such 
turn, turn away. Who has the who in the last days should have godliness? Well, but have a form of it. His people, the Seventh day Adventist. And notice that scripture. Go to First Timothy chapter four. Because it's not by accident that the Lord's messenger would quote First Timothy chapter four and verse number one. Right. Because once they are in a fallen condition, once they are in apostasy, so apostasy in the church, mm -hmm. they separate themselves from present truth. What do they find themselves listening to? Seducing, Giving heed to Hillary. Seducing spirits and, what? and doctrines of devils. Wow. Let's read that. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 1. What it says there. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. They mm. don't want us to miss it, right? That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, mm -hmm. giving heed to seducing spirits and, and doctrines of devils. You know, friends, what, what does this bring to view? Does this scripture bring to view spiritualism? It does. Right? Yes. Giving heed to seducing spirits and what? Doctrines of? Of devils. This is spiritualism. All right? So now. Should we see apostasy in the SDA church? Yes. Should we see spiritualism in the SDA church? Have we seen it, especially in the same month of October? Yes. How yes, have we, we have. seen that, Hillary? Well, Talk to us. Well, we understand that during the early, the first week, actually, of October, yes. uh, the Autumn Council had convened. And while most of the world church that was following the Autumn Council, they mm -hmm. were focused on the issue of women's ordination. Yes. They were debating it. There were m multiple articles written on both sides of the issue. So mm. everyone's attention was diverted to that issue yes. there. But there was an equally insidious evil that had swept in almost imperceptibly. What was that? Well, spiritualism. Let me ask you a question. Why would you say spiritualism mm -hmm. imperceptibly was swept into the SDA church during the annual council the first week of October. Swept in, strong words, Hillary. Yes, strong almost words. imperceptibly because strong there words. were some individuals that pulled the cover off, which we'll get to later. But why would you say swept in? Well, we could have said crept in, but we've said swept in because this spiritualism movement, this spiritualistic movement was endorsed by the GC leaders, mm -hmm. was praised mm -hmm. by the GC leaders, mm -hmm. and... Um, even the president himself. No, I want everyone to hear more. So in what context was spiritualism brought into the annual council among the general conference leaders of mm -hmm. Seventh-day Adventists just a few days ago? In what context? To combat what? Mm -hmm. Well, to combat, combat uh, pornography. Mm -hmm. Pornography addiction among pastors in the Seventh-day Adventist church mm -hmm. and also among members. So friends, they brought in psychology. Mm -hmm. They brought in spiritual advisors from Babylon. Babylon. Ecumenism. Spiritual exercises. Spiritual exercises. Yes. What else, Hillary? Talk to us. Self-exaltation. What else? I think you said ecumenism, right? Centering prayer. Right. Spiritual formation. Emerging church ideas. Oh, friends. Paganism. In what context again? To combat sin. How are you going to bring in sin, spiritualism, to combat sin? As we were talking and having the Bible study, even my son Christian said what, Hillary? He said, can Satan cast out Satan? And the answer is no, he cannot. Can't. How could this be in our church? You know, friends, this was brought to our attention. As you can see on the screen, this was, this was a snapshot of the, the delegates, the attendees at the annual council just a few days ago in this month of October. Spiritualism right. in the church, right? right? The first week of October and the very last week, the very last day of October, the death of Protestantism. Mercy. Is this accidental? Falling away first. No, friends. Notice, notice. And this was brought to our attention by a good friend, Chris Chung, from the ministry, The Fourth Angels Publishing. As you can see on the screen, they have a YouTube channel there. Autumn, the Autumn Council, Annual Council, General Conference 2017, October 8th, 2017, the 2 p.m. session there. We'll get back to that. But why was this so startling? Spiritualism. Well, Ecumenism, spiritual formation, centering prayer, um, 
uh, uh, men from Babylon. Right, spiritual advisors. Why is this yeah. so startling? Well, it was startling because, and saddening at the same time, because the president, Ted Wilson, who had at the beginning of his presidency said to beware of these movements, beware of looking outside of the church, you know, to find spiritual mm. insight, mm. beware of spiritual formation, mm -hmm. beware of, you know, inviting, listening to men from Babylon. Mm. He said those very words. He said, mm. go forward, mm. you know, you consult the Bible and spirit of prophecy. Don't look outside the church right. for any solution. Look within the church. How many of you remembered Elder Ted Wilson's inaugural address at the general conference session. Right? You all, amen? Even, even you online, amen? Safe to serve. Let's take a look at this, just to recall. Here it is right here, Dwayne. Go forwards and not backwards. Do not succumb to the mistaken idea, gaining support even in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, of accepting worship or evangelistic outreach methods merely because they are new and trendy. We must be vigilant to test all things according to the supreme authority of God's word and the counsel with which we have been blessed in the writings of Ellen G. White. Don't reach out to movements or mega churches, centers outside the Seventh-day Adventist church which promise you spiritual success based on faulty theology. Stay away from non-biblical spiritual disciplines or methods of spiritual formation that are rooted in mysticism, such as contemplative prayer, centering prayer, and the emerging church movement in which they are promoted. Look within the Seventh-day Adventist church to humble pastors, evangelists, Bible scholars, leaders, and departmental directors who can provide evangelistic methods and programs that are based on solid biblical principles and the great controversy theme. Go forward, not backward. Use Christ-centered, Bible-based worship and music practices in church services. While we understand that church services, worship services, and cultures vary throughout the world, and we respect that. Don't go backwards into confusing pagan settings where music and worship become so focused on emotion and experience that you lose the central focus on the Word of God. Now, how many of you were touched by that message? All right. And if you notice, this is not to condemn Elder Ted Wilson, by no means. This man needs to get godly respect. But when you can see clearly that what he's saying and what he is endorsing and blessing are two separate things, then somebody, we as a people, as a church, need to hold the leaders accountable. Amen. They need to reconcile these things. The protest doesn't only belong to calling men in mm -hmm. Babylon, back to scripture, right. but also leaders within our church, Amen. whether high or low, God is no respecter right. of persons to call them back to the word of God. Amen. Now, at this time, I'm going to roll the clip from the annual council, mm -hmm. all right, wherein they brought in this man, this, this, this movement from Babylon to come into the Seventh-day Adventist church to help pastors who are addicted to pornography. Now you know, if pastors are addicted to pornography in the Seventh-day Adventist church, then even the members are also addicted. Right. How can the pastors help the members if the members are struggling and they come to a struggling pastor? What solution can, mm -hmm. can he give? Well, the very solution he was told to receive himself. Right. Go to Babylon to receive it. Wow. Look at this carefully. Sticks. We understand that 30% of clergy across the board, and that's a conservative estimate, have been entrapped or are addicted to pornography. And where does a church leader go? To whom do we speak?
So what's the percentage? A, 30 per, a conservative estimate, he said, of 30 percent. Which has clergy. to be higher. Right. And if it's 30 percent, which is at the lower end of the spectrum, mm -hmm. just imagine what that real number is. Right. And that's just among the pastors. The clergy. What about the members? Correct. And it's interesting that in the whole, if you watch the whole um, clip of this man that was just on the screen, he even brought forward an article that was published in um, New Newsweek in 2004. Right, which, which highlighted Seventh-day Adventism, uh, Seventh a pastor, yes. a Seventh-day Adventist pastor that was struggling with, with pornography. So notice now, did he do the right thing in calling the addiction to pornography a sin? Yes, yes he did. Mm -hmm. It's a sin. Right. But no, notice now, to whom must the pastor go? That's the question he asked. To the Bible? To Jesus? They say, we must bring this person to a psychologist. To who, friends? A psychologist, a psychologist from Babylon. Now, look with me in your Bibles to 2 Kings. Go to 2 Kings with me. 2 Kings chapter 1. All right? And we know that the Word of God speaks negatively about psychology, mm -hmm. especially from men from Babylon. Right, because it's self-centered. That's it. It's mm -hmm. not God-centered, Christ-centered. It's self-centered. Self and self-centeredness is of the devil. It's spiritualism wanting us to look within for the right. power and not look into Jesus. Correct. That there's something divine within that yes. we must bring out. Let's read that. Second Kings chapter 1. 2 Kings chapter 1, and let's take a look here at verse number 1 of 2 Kings. What it says there, Hillary? Uh, 2 Kings 1. Verse 1. Read verse 2. Okay. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice mm -hmm. in his upper chamber that was in Samaria yes. and was sick. Mm. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, yes. the god of Ekron, where I shall recover of this disease. Mm. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of mm, Samaria, mm, mm. and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a god in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the uh, god of Ekron? And what happened? The judgment now. Verse 4. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed mm, on mm, which mm. thou art gone up, mm. but shalt surely die. Why? And Elijah departed. Why? First of all, this is Elijah. And what does Malachi chapter 4, verse 4 through verse 6 say, based on what we covered yesterday? That before the great day of the Lord, he's going to send Elijah the prophet. You mean literal Elijah? No, the message and the experience oh, of Elijah. And, and what did Elijah encounter in his day? A king in Israel. Do you see it now? Yes. A king in Israel seeking. He's sick in need of healing. And instead of turning to God, and God's principles, God's methods, he turns to the world. Right. And it's interesting that Elijah was given a commission. It says, arise, go up to meet the messenger. Mm -hmm. So we have to meet this spiritualism. Mm -hmm. We can't mm -hmm. just sit back idly. It. And it's interesting because it said he's going to inquire of Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. The root word of Beelzebub is Baal. Mm -hmm. And we learned last night what Baal worship is connected yes, to. Sunday worship. Sunday worship, worship. Babylon. Sunday and yes. here we see mm. um, Adventists going to Babylon to, to uh, employ spiritualistic methods for healing. It was no different in Elijah's day, but we must arise mm. and meet it. Friends, before I read, I want Father in Heaven, let's pray. Father in Heaven, we truly do need more of your spirit this evening. Help us to hear your voice speaking to us, saying, this is the way. Walk you in it. Bless us now, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. I want to ask you a question, friends. Is the addiction to porn any different than other sins? Sin is what? Sin. Just as a person may be addicted to pornography, mm -hmm. somebody else may not have that weakness. But another may have a weakness to alcohol, to smoking, tobacco. To fornication. Intemperance. The I list mean, goes on and on. Amen. So, so now, when the president and the GC leaders of our church say here is a sin called pornography, and the only antidote is to go where? 
Babylon. To Babylon. The God of exile. What door has been opened? Talk to me. What door has been opened? What excuse now can the members use now if they are struggling with any other sin? Well, that they can go to Babylon or go to the world to receive healing. That's it. When the healing can be found in the word of God. Look at this. Here it is. This is where you see the ecumenical alliance between uh, General Conference Health Ministries, Advent Source, mm -hmm. the NAD. Why the NAD keeps, keeps coming up? And Bowling Green University from Babylon. Look at this right here. I'm very grateful that there's been a very meaningful partnership between the North America Division, uh, Advent Source, Bowling Green University in Ohio and General Conference Health Ministries in creating a resource called Gateway. And we're very grateful as well that Dr. Ken Pargament, an emeritus professor from the University of Bowling Green State University, but he's a man of distinction who has published over 300 articles on religion, spirituality and health, authored The Psychology of Religion and Coping, Theory, Research, Practice, has won many awards and most recently the first Outstanding Applied Psychology of Religion and Spirituality Award from the American Psychological Association in 2017. He is an individual of stature in the scientific world. He is a man of deep religious convictions. He is of the Jewish faith has worked very closely with Christians and he's worked very closely with Christian Seventh-day Adventists. What's wrong with that clip? Many things. <laughs> Anybody? What's wrong with that clip? What stood out to you from that clip? Anybody? You know, it's interesting. Praising a man, all right? His educational qualifications are being put forth as the reason why yes. he should be able to help. Wow. Mm -hmm. From a different faith. A different faith. From Babylon, right? Right. I yes, what else? And we shouldn't be unequally yoked with right. men from Babylon, right? Anything else? And also Bowling Green, because even though he has the Jewish faith, he also received education from the worldly system. Yes. It's not necessarily from a Jewish, Jewish standpoint mm -hmm. that he received his credentials, Bible. but from the world yes. itself. And it's interesting that if you listened keenly to that piece, that clip, this, this is already in place right. because he works with Adventist, yes. Dr. Landless said, right? Mm -hmm. So it's already in place. It was brought to the annual council for the blessings now. To be dedicated. All right now. Right. And understand this. Here, is, here, here are church leaders and people who are in sin. And we have to go to Babylon and find someone's worldly credits, accreditation. Credentials. And say those credentials make a person qualified to help somebody with sin. Is that biblical? Not at all. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 with us. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And let's take a look at verse number 18. It's the opposite in scripture. Notice, uh, what, 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 who did Christ br uh, bring into his uh, close circles, circle and send them forward as his messengers? Who? Well, these were uneducated men That's by the world told. standards. That's what we're told. Right. And they were sent forth to show people how to get victory over, over sin. They were casting out devils, demons. We're not saying anything is wrong with education, but it must be true education. education. Amen. Not from Babylon, my friend. Is that point clear? Yes. You sure? All right. First Corinthians chapter one. What's in verse 18, Hillary? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power, power of God. God. So Praise if somebody God. is struggling, don't miss these points. We're not going to wait until the end of this presentation to then give you all the, the, the principles and the steps to get victory over pornography or any other sin. We're going to sprinkle it all the way through this presentation. So where is the power of God found? In the cross, it says. In the preaching, preaching of, of the of cross. The cross. Mm -hmm. Why? Why in the preaching of the cross? Don't forget this. Was Christ crucified? Yes. Did he rest in the grave? Yes. Did he rise on the third day? 
did Paul say in Romans 6 now, we must be buried with Christ now, right? Yes. And then rise to walk how? In, in the newness, newness of, of life. life. Amen, friends. The it's Lord. the preaching on the cross. Yes. Hmm. So now, to whom did Christ give the everlasting gospel, which includes the preaching of the cross? Bowling Green, Bowling no. Green University? No. Or was it uh, Oakwood University? Andrews University? Southern University? Mm -hmm. You see, it's our schools. Right. But where are we going? Right. See, the world should be coming to us to find the solutions for their spiritual exactly. sin problems. But we're turning to them, unfortunately. Let's read on. Skip one down from 1 Corinthians 1. Read verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Mm. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So, to save them. Mm -hmm. All right. By the what? The preaching of the cross. Skip one down to verse 27, into verse 28. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Amen. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Note this quotation on the same thought. Great Controversy, page 606. Thus the message of the third angel will be proclaimed. As the time comes for it to be given, with greatest power, the Lord will work through humble instruments. Listen keenly, attentively. The laborers will be qualified rather by the unction of his spirit Amen. than by the training of literary institutions. Is that point clear? Men of what, Hillary? Of faith and prayer. Will be constrained to go forth with Holy zeal. De read on, Hillary. Declaring the words which God gives them. The sins of Babylon will be laid open. So what is uh, the prereq? What are the qualifications then that we must have for God to use us to deliver individuals who are captives to pornography, mm -hmm. captives to any other sin? What, my friends? Men of what? Faith and prayer. Amen. Oh, yes, Amen. And we have to be willing to lay open the sins of Babylon, not inquire oh, of Babylon. No, neither the God of Ekron. Amen? Amen. Let's move on to this third clip. In this third clip is where they actually mentions the program from Bowling Green, from uh, Ken Pargament. It's called Gateway. Now, that word is, 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 is subtle. Gateway to, gateway to where? Hmm. What comes to mind when you hear the word gateway? Well, I think of the term the, a gateway drug because a lot of times they say, uh, for example, that marijuana could be a gateway drug to, other. to stronger drugs mm -hmm. such as heroin mm -hmm. or crack or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's just... And a, not only marijuana, but even drinking coffee right. can lead to opium. That's in the, the Encyclopedia Britannica. That's right. a proven fact. Yes. So it leads to something more, mm -hmm. uh, more potent, I should say, in the wrong sense, That's not it. potent it. in the good sense. That's but. It. Look at this. Watch carefully again. Gateway is an eight session program developed out of a wealth of psychological research and knowledge wealth of psychological research and knowledge wealth of psychological research and knowledge but it does not guarantee a cure from difficulties associated with viewing pornography but it does not guarantee a cure from difficulties associated with viewing pornography promotion of gateway from Babylon to help somebody who has a sin. And what is it? A wealth of what? Psychological research and knowledge. Psychology. Let's see what God says about psychology. This is a book called Mind, Character, and Personality. Amen? Amen. Book 2, page 698. Hillary. 
First paragraph. I've been shown that we must be guarded on every side and perseveringly resist the insinuations and devices of Satan. He has transformed himself into an angel of light and is deceiving thousands and leading them captive. The omega will be of a what nature? Startling nature. Read on. And it's interesting, in the alpha of omega, in, in the SDA church, it came in the context of spiritualism. Hmm. Amen? Yes. Kellogg's. And so, in the Omega, what will we also find? Spiritualism. Right. Watch Not this. just in the form of the emerging church that we were warned against, but in the form of psychology. Imperceptibly, right? Mm -hmm. All right. The advantage. The advantage he takes of the science of the human mind what is, is that? tremendous. Psychology. psychology. Read on. Here, serpent-like, he imperceptibly creeps in to corrupt the work of God. Mm. The miracles and works of Christ he would make appear as the result of human skill and power. Read on. Volume 1, 290. If he should make an open, bold attack upon Christianity, it would bring the Christian in distress and agony to the feet of his Redeemer, and his strong and mighty deliverer would put the bold, sorry, would put the bold adversary to flight. He therefore transformed himself, transforms himself into an angel of light mm. and works upon the mind to allure from the only safe and right path. The sciences of phrenology, psychology, and mesmerism are the channel through which mm. Satan comes more directly to this generation and works with that power which is to characterize his efforts near what event? The close no. of probation. Oh, my friends. So we are certain then, what is about to close? Probation. Oh, my friends. As they come into our church now? Yes, through yes. another angle. Yes. Not through the church side, because if it were to come directly through the church doors, then you would see people like... Push back. Yeah, push back. Like the emerging church, a lot of people are saying, stay clear of it. Yes. Stay clear of this emotionalism, this type of music. But then if it comes in through the back door, through psychology science. and science. the sciences of the mind, they're ready to accept it. Oh, yes, my friend. Because we're not reading. We're not reading That's the all. spirit of prophecy. God is here. That was the very point I was about to make. If we read and study the books mm -hmm. with a humble heart, right. God will teach us. Right. Look at this, my friends. Mind, character, and personality. Book one, page 10. The true principles of psychology are found in the Holy Scriptures. Wow. Let's see what this is. Mm -hmm. Man knows not his own value. He acts according to his unconverted temperament of character because he does not look unto Jesus, the Alpha and Omega, yes. the author and the finisher of his faith. Hillary, everyone listen now. He who comes to Jesus, he who believes on him and makes Jesus his example realizes the meaning of the words. What words, Hillary? To them gave he power to become the sons of God. So do you see what the true principles of psychology are, which are in the scriptures? Yes. If we look to Jesus, That's if right. we come to Jesus, what will he give us? Power. What will he give us? He will give us he power. He will give us power to become the sons of God. Friends, I'm going to say it one more time because this is the nail in the coffin on this movement called Gateway mm -hmm. that Elder Ted Wilson and the GC leaders have not only endorsed, but have blessed in the church. Let's go again, back to the, uh, onto the screen. The true principles of psychology are found where? In the Holy Scriptures. All right. And the very last phrase says, he who comes to Jesus, who believes on him and makes him his example, realizes the meaning of the words. What now? To them gave he power to become the sons of God. So if I have a sin and I believe on Christ and I go to Christ, will he give me power over that sin? Yes. Will he give me power over that sin? Yes. His name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his, his people, people from their sins. Is pornography and watching it, is it a sin? Absolutely. It is. Will he give us victory? Yes. But what if I show you now the very... Gateway, mm -hmm. what do we call that? Protocol? Program. Program mm -hmm. 
that has been brought into the SDA church, they tell us it cannot cure us. Wow. So why bring it in? Exactly. Is that biblical psychology then? No, it's not. Is that true psychology then? Oh, no. That's why I emphasized man, character, and personality. Book 1, page 10. Here it is now. Doing. Here it is. Gateway is an eight-session program developed out of a wealth of psychological research and knowledge. Wealth of psychological research and knowledge. Wealth of psychological research and knowledge. But it does not guarantee a cure from difficulties associated with viewing pornography. But it does not guarantee a cure from difficulties associated with viewing pornography. My friends, think about this. The amount of money, the amount of time, the general conference leaders, along with Elder Ted Wilson, are going to spend on this program to funnel and channel 30% of SDA pastors, not counting the members who are addicted to pornography, in a program that cannot cure. Wow. Do you know what text come to mind? Isaiah 55 and verse number 2. Why spend money for that which is not bread? Go there with me. Go there with me. Why spend money for that which is not bread? Why spend time on something that cannot cure, that cannot satisfy? Read that for us, Hillary. Isaiah chapter 55 mm -hmm. and verse number 2. What it says there, Hillary? Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and oh eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Oh, my friends. And notice, in J write down the scripture, Jeremiah chapter 2, and verse number 13, God through Jeremiah spoke to Israel and said, My people, they have committed two evils against me. They have forsaken me, the what? Living water. Living water. And have hewed out to themselves cisterns, broken, broken cisterns, cisterns, gateway, psychology, broken cisterns, right. which cannot, cannot hold, hold water. water. Wow. Why? Can't cure. Can't cure. But now, let's get to the Bible now. Does the Bible tell us that there is no bomb? Pardon me, pardon me. That song came to my mind. Mm-hmm. There that is. says, uh, earth has no sorrow. sorrow. That what? That heaven, heaven cannot heal. Cannot heal. Cannot cure. Why would we sing those songs? Hmm. And then don't believe what we're singing, my friends. Let's go. John chapter 8, put down the scripture now. And if somebody is struggling with the addiction to pornography or any other sin, John chapter 8 says what now? In verse 32, you shall know the truth. truth. And the, the truth, truth shall, shall make, make you free. Shall make you free. free. Amen. And verse 36 says, uh, if the Son of Man shall make you free, what now, friends? You, you shall, shall be, be what? Free, free indeed. Indeed. Amen. Put free those in mind down. and free in indeed. Free in action. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And put down. Let's get one more. John chapter 8. The same John 8. The same John 8 before verse. 32 right. and 36, what did Christ say to a woman church, woman church, that yes. was caught in, in a kindred sin to pornography, caught in adultery? Right. What did Christ say to her? Neither do I, Hillary. Either. Neither do I. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Mm. Go and sin no more. Oh. Praise the Lord. Is that a cure? It is Go a cure. Go and what now? And sin no more. Oh, my well, I'm thinking about Jude 24 because he's able to keep us from falling. Put those scriptures down. Mm -hmm. Let me give you one more. Let's, let's consider Matthew chapter 17 
and verse 21. I want to read that one, Hillary. Matthew chapter 17. And let's take a look at verse 21 because there are some individuals who might be saying right now, locally, even some online, Pastor, I'm struggling with the sin of pornography. Pastor, you just don't know. You're right. But God does know. Amen? Amen. And Jesus says that there are some sins that, are, that we are weak to, weak towards because of our sinful nature. All right. And what does Christ say as a formula to get victory? Mm -hmm. Verse 21, Matthew 17. What is this, Hillary? How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by, but by prayer and fasting. Praise the Lord. This kind, this kind, you can fill it in the blank. Mm -hmm. This kind, what is your kind? That's right. Well, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Who does that remind you of? Well, it reminds me of Jesus because that quotation that you read about true psychology, it said it looks to Jesus, our example. So Whoa, if we're going to thank get... Thank you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm, so if we're going to get victory, we have to look at how Jesus was able to uh, overcome temptation, right. fleshly desires. Talk to us. So if you go to Matthew 4, That's what it. was Jesus doing in the wilderness wow. before he was tempted? With the three great temptations, which cover every temptation right. we will ever encounter. Yes, he was fasting and praying. And the first temptation when Satan came to him and tempted him with, with appetite, appetite, that was the first yes. um, temptation. And people that struggle with pornography, they have an a appetite yes. towards, well, pornography. That's, it. that's their desire. Yes. That's their lust. Yes. So Christ received victory over the lust of the flesh, yes. over the lust of the eyes. Mm. And the pride of life. That's it. And what did Christ say in Matthew 4, 4 now? He said, when he was it tempted? is written. It is written. Man, Man shall, shall not, not live, live by, by bread alone. But by. Can the word, can the promises of God give us victory? Right. It's there. And it connects with Isaiah 55. You're spending money for that which is not bread. But you shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. And it goes back now. So what if somebody has the loss of the flesh since you brought out? That first temptation was over appetite, mm -hmm. lust, desire, pornography, adultery, whatever it may be, liquor drinking, smoke, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And 1 John 2, verse 17, right? Love not the world, right? Mm -hmm. 15. Verse 15 right? and verse 17, <laughs> verse 17 says, For all that is, is in, in the, the world, world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. What does James 1 say about lust? Well, that when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth death, sin. And when sin, and when sin is finished, finished it bringeth forth, forth death. death. Yes. So what is God telling us about lust? If we do not do what, we will get victory. If we do not conceive it, cherish it, hold yes. on to it, dwell on it. So when the thought comes, the desire comes, the temptation to sin comes. Whatever that sin may be, what must we do? Don't conceive it. That's right. Don't harbor the thought. Submit your mind to Christ. Oh, wait a minute. Second Corinthians 10. Cast it down. Cast, oh. Yes, cast down that thought. Say it. Casting down. Imagination and, and every high that thing. That exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity. Every thought to the, the obedience of, of Christ. Amen, Amen. friends. That's, that's where the power lies. Yes, it lies in Christ. You cannot find a solution. You cannot find victory outside of Christ. Yes. It, it just cannot happen. I want to ask you a question. So would you put on your tithe envelope a section other, I'm going to donate this money to the church for gateway program? Would you? Mm -hmm. Knowing you are spending money for that which is not bread. Not bread. Something that cannot guarantee a cure. Cannot satisfy. So they're setting you up to fail. They're oh. just telling you, don't expect to receive a cure. Oh my friends. Oh my friends. And these are the men we must look up to. Let's move on. Look at this right here. Doing. Now this is, this is, this clip is when they brought in the man uh, Ken Pargament. Mm -hmm. And the sad reality is that they allowed him a Babylonian, to address, to address the GC delegates, the leaders of the word church, and listen what he told them. Look at this. Sense of moral struggle. How can I be doing something that's so inconsistent with what I value? How can I be acting in a way 
that's totally opposed to what I believe in. And so pastors and others feel torn up inside. They feel torn. The fourth session is about how do you become more the person that's your inspired self? How to become in touch with your spiritual self? How do you find that divine spark within you and live according to that higher self? No. Wow. Divine. Henry, talk, talk. Let me fix my mic. Go ahead. Okay. Did you hear them say divine spark within you? What does the Bible say is, in, is within us? Thank you. We are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. There's no divinity in us unless we accept Christ to live his divinity through us. But he said they're trying to bring out that divine spark within you. So this is spiritualism. If you cannot see it, there is no divinity within us in and of ourselves. So here they have a person pushing. So here they have a person who is pushing, proclaiming spiritualism. Yes, look within. Right. Friends, if you have sin within, how are you going to look within to get victory? Does that make sense to you? What did Christ say? Can, can someone bring a clean thing out, out of, of an, an unclean? unclean. Can happen. happen. Can happen. Can happen. Right. And, and this is what we are seeing our leaders push. Right. Here is the punchline. Friends, so here we are going now to Babylon to receive the antidote for sin. What is the antidote for every sin? What? Not who, what? The gospel. The gospel. Talk to me. What is the antidote for sin? The antidote for sin. What is it? The gospel. So if you have the issue with, with pornography and you go to Babylon, what are you implying? Who has the gospel? Wow. Who has the gospel? Mm. And yet we profess as Seventh-day Adventists that we have the everlasting gospel. gospel. Right. So where must we look then to get the antidote for sin? In the church. Right, that proclaims the, the everlasting gospel. Look at this right here. This, this statement is from councils to teachers, parents, and students, page 467. Hillary. As God's ministers behold the awful results of long-continued sin, their hearts are touched with the world's woe, and they are endeavoring to labor as the master's, master workman and his disciples labored. Connected with the divine healer, they are going forth in the power of his might to teach and to heal. They realize that the gospel is the only antidote for sin, and that as Christ's witnesses, they are to bear testimony to its power. Read on. As they point the afflicted ones to the Lamb of God mm. who taketh away the sin of the world. Not psychology. No, not self. They don't point to self. Amen. Don't look within. Amen. His transforming grace and miracle working power are causing many to accept the message of truth that is born. His healing power, united with the gospel message, is bringing success in emergency. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is working upon hearts, and the salvation of God is being revealed. Friends, did you get that? And there is, there is an intimate connection between spiritualism and the union with the beast, the papacy, and the false prophet, apostate, Protestants. Yesterday, I shared a video with you how this pastor from Babylon, he told us from where they received training. And they received training from a spiritualist by the name of John Wimber. John Wimber. John Wimber is a part of the emerging church movement. Wow. And the emerging church movement pastors Teach to get victory over anything, you must look, look within. Weird. There's divinity within you. Look I'm within. I'm going to read that. Look within you. So we're seeing how October 31st, 2017, papacy, Protestants, apostates, mm -hmm. uniting, is connected with our lesson today. Look at this right here, this video. What's here, friends? This is from Kent Parliament. This is the gateway 
program. Mm -hmm. And what is, on, what is in session for Hillary headlines? Strengthening your inspired self. Your what self? Self must be dying, but you want to strengthen self and you're calling it inspired um, on top of that. Paul says, there is no good thing that dwelleth no. in my flesh. Look at this right here. And on great, in Great Controversy, page 554, I won't read this. Sister White tells us where spiritualism began. Right. It began where? In the Garden, Garden of, Eden. of Eden. And notice, how did Satan get Eve to fall? What did Satan say to Eve? Well, that you will become as a God. Your huh? eyes will be open. God doth know. In the day you eat thereof, your, your eyes, eyes. you Lust shall become mm -hmm. as God's God. divine self inspired self spiritualism right you will rise to a higher sphere as it were so as in the alpha in the book of genesis right. so in the omega, omega and that's what psychology here. teaches this quote says that spiritualism teaches that man is a creature of progression, progression that he's constantly progressing toward the godhead that's it let's read on let's move on right go forwards and not backwards do not succumb to the mistaken idea gaining support even in the Seventh-day Adventist Church of accepting worship or evangelistic outreach methods merely because they are new and trendy. We must be vigilant to test all things according to the supreme authority of God's Word and the counsel with which we have been blessed in the writings of Ellen G. White. Don't reach out to movements or mega churches centers outside the Seventh-day Adventist Church which promise you spiritual success based on faulty theology. Stay away from non-biblical spiritual disciplines or methods of spiritual formation that are rooted in mysticism such as contemplative prayer, centering prayer, and the emerging church movement in which they are promoted. Look within the Seventh-day Adventist Church to humble pastors, evangelists, Bible scholars, leaders, and departmental directors who can provide evangelistic methods and programs that are based on solid biblical principles and the great controversy theme. Go forward, not backward. Use Christ-centered, Bible-based worship and music practices in church services. While we understand that church services, worship services, and cultures vary throughout the world, and we respect that, don't go backwards into confusing pagan settings where music and worship become so focused on emotion and experience that you lose the central focus on the Word of God. He's going backward then. Hmm. Look at the statement right here. This is uh, the pastor I shared yesterday from Babylon, the charismatic movement saying that come and see the gold fall on the Catholics, right? Listen who is his mentor spiritual and advisor. their mentors, spiritual advisors. Right? Hello out there. And, um, but I got into the journey in the spirit through John Wimber in the, in the mid 80s. And then along that line with the journey in the spirit, we learned about the Ephesians chapter 4 gifts and apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors. As you can see, you can do your research. John Wimber, journey in the spirit. He's a part of the emerging church church. Mm -hmm. Do you see it, my friends? On the screen right there, the headline? The headline? This emerging church. Right. Just as Elder Ted Wilson said, right? Stay away from it. All right, it. watch mm -hmm. carefully now. Who else is a part of the emerging church who are students or um, Co uh, leaders with John Wimber? You have, uh, let me give, you have Brian McLaren, mm -hmm. Doug Paget, even Tony Campolo, all these guys. Rick Warren, friends, there they are. There they are, Leonard Sweet. Do you know these men have been invited, have come and spoken at Seventh-day Adventist institutions? Right, on a regular basis. Hmm. Look at this carefully, watch carefully. Notice, this is Leonard Sweet on the bottom, right? 
There it is. Leonard Sweet attended which SDA institution there? Which one is this, my friends? He attended. Which one? This is PUC. Notice here. It says, the second paragraph, Leonard Sweet is one of the predominant leaders in the new spirituality, emerging church, and what? Spiritual, Spiritual formation thrust, and one who has spoken at several Adventist institutions. institutions. And here it is. What does he believe? He believes that there is a God within yeah. us. The spiritual self. Right. Let's move on there. All right. Tony Campolo. Look at this. Tony Campolo spoke where? At Union College Adventist Institution. Right. As a matter of fact, Tony Campolo was invited to do, an, to do a commencement speech for Oakwood University. What year was that? 2003, three, three. I believe. And that was where he preached at the Von Braun in, in, in Huntsville. Downtown, Hun downtown Huntsville, Alabama, st stating that our church, it's Friday. And what? And Sunday's coming. And the whole church students began to. Right. That was his punchline throughout the whole, Cheer him on. whole message. It's, sun, it, it's Friday. And Sunday's, Sunday's coming. coming. All right, friends. All right. Tony Campolo. There, there they are at our churches. And they teach that there's a God within you. That's it. Brian McLaren. Again, you see him there. Even this man here, Samir Selmanovich. All these men, I'm telling you, in our churches, even in our schools. This is, what's his name? This is the Professor Kwesi, all right? And then Richard Foster's book. L let me move on. The Celebration of Discipline. discipline. What is in that book? Look at this. The second red sentence says, We can descend with the mind into the heart most easily through the imagination. In this regard, the great Scottish preacher Alexander White speaks of what? The, the divine offices, offices and the splendid services of the Christian imagination. Wow. This book brought in on the campus of Oakwood. This is spiritual psychology from Babylon. That's right. Look at self to get victory. Let's hasten on here. Look at where? Self. You know, self. friends, in the book of Jeremiah, God said to Israel through Jeremiah, you can go to Babylon, hmm. get bombed, but you shall not receive healing. And where are we going to? Bowling Green University. Wow. Ken Pargament, Gateway, a, a world of psychologists from Babylon. You will not receive healing. And they told us this program cannot cure you. That's right. But what does Jeremiah 8 say, Hillary? Well, it says, is there no bomb in Gilead? Why is it that the health of my people is not recovered? It's because you're not going to Gilead. You're not going to God. You're going to Egypt. You're going to Babylon. And it's interesting that the two verses above it says the harvest is ended. The summer is past. Wow. We are not saved. It's not coincidental why those two are united yes. or connected yes. in Scripture. Yes. Let's take a closer look at this program here. Do you remember this? Let me move on. This is the gateway program, right? This is a table of contents for the actual program now. Mm -hmm. Look at section nine. It says this, learning about spoken reflection as a way to become the best version of yourself. Self-help book. Yes. Everything is self-centered. That's it. It's not God or no. Christ-centered. Look at this right here. Number 10, selecting an affirming word or phrase for your spoken reflection. What is that? That's a chant. Yes. And it's contemplative That's because it. you're focusing on this one word or phrase and you're, you're meditating. Reflection, meditation. And Christ warned us about this in Matthew 6. Repetitive right. statements. Because they want. Let's read that. Math, Matthew chapter 6. Go there. Matthew chapter 6. It's a dangerous program. 
spiritualism in our church. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 7. What it says there, Hillary? But when ye pray, use mm. not vain repetitions mm. as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. That means no victory. Right. There it is. Selecting an affirming word or phrase for your spoken reflection. Mm. All right, friends. All right. And did not, Elder Wilson said, stay away from centering prayer, right. spiritual formation, mysticism, mysticism, chants, right. paganism, yet he's endorsing it. Look at this In right here. form of psychology. Exactly. Number 11, five meaningful minutes reflecting on your inspired self at the end of the day. What should we be reflecting on at the end of the day before we go to bed? But you're focusing on self and how you're inspired. We should be focusing on his word. That should be our last thought. Wow. This shouldn't be in any of wow. our day, wow. morning, evening, My friends, at any time. Hillary, even if the people get victory from when they rose in the morning until they're about to go to bed, do you ever reflect on self, how good self was? No. Oh, I got vi No, you, looked at, you, you look at Jesus. Right. And you thank him for the victory of the day. Right. Not on self. No, you examine yourself to see how you've hurt him. It's right there. Look at this. Number 12. Your reactions to the focusing on the what? The inspired life exercise. Exercise. Spiritual exercises. Mm -hmm. And look Spiritual at this now, friends. Compassion. Number 14. Ways to cultivate what compassion? Self-compassion. What is that? Self-compassion. Ways to cultivate this. That's, that's centering on self. Right. Look at this and now, friends. And it could friends. lead to other, other sins that's as it. well. That's it. Look at this. Let's hasten on, Hillary. Yes. All right. Amen. Gateway to wholeness. On the left column, one, two, three, the third, the fourth section, left column, this program that SDA pastors must now go through and the GC leaders have endorsed, it was what, Hillary? Bold words. Oh, um... Created by educators, authors, mentors, researchers, and, and spiritual advisors. What comes to mind there? Well, the spiritual advisors, for one thing. Of course. Because when you think of the word spiritual anymore, it doesn't necessarily have to mean religious. Yes. Somebody can um, claim to be spiritual without being affiliated with any denomination or religion. Pause. Have you ever heard people say, I'm not religious. I'm only spiritual. Yeah. Right. I right. mean, Oprah Winfrey believes she calls herself a spiritual person. These are people that want to be in touch with the human soul. Yes. That, that's what they mean by spiritual. Yes. It has nothing to do with the word of God or, or religion. Yes. 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 All right. So these spiritual advisors could be the men from Babylon, yes. but they're also these atheist, atheistic Ag men. Agnostics. Right. Yes. Look at this. Then in the actual program, session five is all about what? Guilt, Guilt and, and shame. shame. I want to ask a question. What book could we go to from the library of the Spirit of Prophecy with the Bible? What book actually deals with guilt and shame? How to deal with guilt? Amen. Steps to Christ. Mm -hmm. Why go to Babylon? They're giving you set steps to self, but <laughs> Christ wants to give us steps to Christ. Again, Hillary, that's, that's potent. Why, yeah. Hillary? Well, these, Steps to now. this program is leading you to exalt yourself, to love yourself, embrace yourself. No, but the way how you said it earlier. Oh, yeah. It's steps to self. <laughs> but? But but true psychology is steps to Christ. Praise God. Praise <laughs> God. That's open for anyone to use, not just for our church. We want to use this for people uh, that are out there, no matter where they are in the world, whether they have faith or they don't have faith, where they're from other faith uh, traditions. Right? To reach people in Babylon. Think about this. Can Satan cast out Satan? Not at all. And Sister White says these very words in Selected Messages, Book 1, page 204. The enemy of souls has stated he wants to bring in a reformation among our churches. 
and were this reformation to take place, what would be the result? The principles of truth, mm. which God has given to his remnant church, would be discarded. Our religion would be changed. changed. The fundamental principles which have sustained the work for the last 50 years would be accounted as, as error. error. A new organization would be established. Books of a new order, order. would be written. A system of intellectual philosophy yes. would be introduced. The founders of this movement would go into the cities and do a wonderful work. Hmm. The Sabbath, of course, would be lightly like regarded, regarded as also the God who created it. Then she says that their foundation would be built on sand, Sifting but sand. storm and tempest will sweep away Amen. the structure. And as we mentioned Alpha and Omega of apostasy in the context of chapter. spiritualism, yes. this statement is written it because it was a spiritualistic movement that yes. she was referring yes. to, the same movement yes. in um, the Alpha and Omega of yes. apostasy yes. that she was referring to. Yes. And it's just interesting that at the same annual council, while the debate is going on about uh, women's ordination yes. and individuals are uh, pointing their finger and saying, these are rebellious unions, something needs to happen, to these rebellious unions to bring them in alignment with the, po yes, with the policy. Yes. And they'll turn to 1 Samuel 15, 23 and say, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You gotta read that. No, we have to read that. <laughs> 1 Samuel 15, the potent point. Rebellious unions. Right. But what does Samuel say about rebellion mm -hmm. and spiritualism? Hillary, Hillary. Um, 23. For rebellion. No, 22. Okay. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings That's and it. sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Mm. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because, read on. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also Shh, rejected thee Lord. from being king. My Lord. Right. So to finish the thought, um, they're saying that these rebellious unions are in witchcraft yes. because they're rebelling yes. against the word of God. Yet, yet they they're bringing in witchcraft Ooh. from another angle, not from the perspective of women's ordination, but it's coming in through uh, false science, through psychology. All right. Now, this is where we close now. They actually invited Elder Ted Wilson to the podium to now bless this gateway movement, to bless what God evidently has what? Has cursed. cursed. Look at this, friends. And to take it to the next level along with our partners. So thank you so much. And Elder Wilson, would you please um, dedicate this program? Uh, Dr. Pargament, we are indebted to you. We thank you for the opportunity of being able to cooperate in something that is so disastrous for, for so many people, and yet there is hope. Dedicate. To, to dedicate the program. Do we not agree that based on scripture, that this is spiritualism? Yes, it's evident, it's clear. What happened to King Saul? Rejected. Who went into spiritualism? What happened to Ahaziah, who sought the god of Ekron? King Saul, the god of en the witch of Endor. What happened? Well, first they were devoid. This Holy Spirit left them, and then they literally died. Does this not remind you of somebody in the Bible, Hillary? Yes, R Balaam. Amen. Talk Balaam. to us. Well, Balaam wanted to put a curse on God's people. Oh, yes. That's witchcraft. He yes. wanted to work witchcraft or sorcery mm. upon God's people. But God did not allow it to happen Why? at that time Why? because they were faithful oh. to his word. So Balaam failed. Though he tried, he yes, had to utter yes, a blessing. Yes, yes. But now when Balaam, on the Balaam's instigation and counsel, right? right? The Midianitish woman came into the camp. Woman, hello? Woman, hello? From Babylon and brought in spiritualism in the camp. And what happened? The curse. The curse came. The curse. 
but from you know, a leader, a person, Balaam was viewed as what among Israel? A true prophet of God. Wow. That's how he was viewed. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Now, friends, if you were in Elder Wilson's shoe, what book would you give to that man? Besides the Bible, what book in the library of the Spirit of Prophecy on health would you give this man? Which book? Mind, character, personality, testimonies Amen. on sexual behavior, um, adultery and divorce, Amen. ministry of healing, Amen. medical ministry, Amen. councils on health. Friends, do you know Everything. right now the GC leaders and AD leaders, they have uh, divorced themselves from true biblical medical missionary work. And they have ascribed to the concept of comprehensive health. If this is the fruit of comprehensive wow. health, we're in, what now? We're in trouble, my friends. If this is comprehensive health, it's not very comprehensive. That means comprehensive means we cannot just use Adventist resources, biblical resources, right? right. We have to mix it with things from from Babylon. That's comprehensive. Wow. Look at this. Mm. On behalf of the Seventh-day Adventist Church uh, and the Health Ministries Department and all those that are connected with it, we want to present to you a lovely book which the Health Ministries Department has produced on balanced, comprehensive health ministry uh, and the beautiful aspects of health which you know very well because you are a health professional. But we want to share this with you, Celebrations it's called, and also a, a lovely note uh, from the department and a special pen that uh, you can use to remember us by when you're making out prescriptions or whatever it is that you'd use it for. But we look forward to continued collaboration. And I want to present this to you and then I would like to pray for the success of this program. Uh, and by them reaching out to the men of Babylon, the men yes. of the world and worldly I'm psychology, it's an acknowledgement that Seventh-day Adventists, they're acknowledging that Seventh-day Adventists do not have the tools, do not have the wherewithal to be able to heal people from uh, mental, yes, yeah, spiritual issues, yes. mental, spiritual yes. issues. I guess Adventist health can only deal with the physical mm, mm, because mm. why are we turning to men of the world mm, mm. Uh, to deal with spiritual issues? And remember that nine tenths, right? Volume five, four, four, five. And at four, 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 it says nine tenths of all disease from which men suffer have their origination where? In the mind. In the mind. And what does the desire of ages, page 671 say? God has given to us his, his spirit, spirit as an overcoming power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated, cultivated tendencies to, to evil, evil. and to impress his character on his church. Is victory available? It is. It really is. And Desire of Ages 324 as well. Uh, Just put it in your notes. Which says what? It. Just give us a paraphrase. Well, as you surrender, yes. God will give you victory. And yes. you will become impregnable, to the, impregnable yes. to the assaults of Satan. Amen. We become a fortress. Right. A mighty fortress. Is our God. A which bulwark. we hold in, yeah, never failing. That's it. And people will begin to look at Seventh-day Adventists because it says, which we hold in a revolted world. Yes. So yes. they will turn to Seventh-day Adventists yes. and say, wow, yes. they're getting victory over here. Maybe I can get yes. help yes. Yes. as yes. well. Why is it that, let me throw, throw this out there, why is it our leaders did not say, let us open up some sanitariums, right? Let's establish some sanitariums and close these hospitals, right? Let's establish some sanitariums, Treatment right? Rooms. Mm -hmm. In the country, take these pastors and these people away from the city. Why? Because character building, don't let me start now. Character building is tenfold greater in the city than in the country, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Adventist home, page 137. Not one family in a hundred will be benefited, and it goes on, physically, mentally, or spiritually, by residing in the city. Adventist home, 137. Let's move on. Establish some sanitarium. Take them in the wilderness to fast and pray. That's where I'm going, Hillary. Mm -hmm. 
because Christ must be our example. example. Amen. He got victory by being where? In the wilderness. wilderness. Being what? Fasting, Fasting and praying. Bring them out there. Have them pray and fast and get back to the foundation of the gospel. Amen. And you will see them leave those sanitariums. Whole. Restore. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the solution. Would you say amen, my friend? Amen. That amen. is the solution. And as we come full circle, which says, killing to heal, we have to die to self. Amen. So Christ can what? Heal us. Heal us. Do you believe you can be healed today? Amen. amen. Even those of you online, safe to serve, do you believe you can be healed? Father in heaven, we thank you for your words this evening. We pray for our president, Ted Wilson, Dr. Landless, all the others, the NAD president. We pray that they will hear your voice and not follow their own inclinations. Because if the head is sick, the whole body is sick. And Satan launches his, his attack at the head, the headquarters of the world. Father, I pray, because I believe you are praying, that your church will become converted. Leaders and laity, it's time for the protest to go forward. Not just in the world, we see that, but in the church. And you're calling for men, men who will not be bought or sold. Men who will call sin by its right name. Men who will stand for the right, though the heavens fall. Help all of us to stand for you and be counted. And if we miss anything, we want to see Jesus to get victory. Amen. Not only do we see him in the wilderness, in Matthew 4, but we see him in Gethsemane. And what was his prayer three times? Father, if it's possible that this cup be passed without me drinking it, let it be done. But Father, not my will, mm -hmm. but thy will be done. And when he prayed that prayer, not my will, but thy will be done, he was strengthened and he continued to agonize in prayer. Mm -hmm. That is the secret of victory over pornography and over every other sin. Not my will, but thy will be done. And don't leave Gethsemane. Don't leave our prayer closet until we get victory. Mm -hmm until we feel strong in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then help us to watch and pray, and then we can keep evil besetment under, and the grace of God can and will appear in us. Save us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, want to thank you again for joining us. By God's grace, we will resume on tomorrow. October 31st. We have, we're here. Amen. October 31st. 2017. Tomorrow, join us again at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. May God be with us until we meet again. Maranatha.